let's look at the un SI units of stress uh, mathematical relation gives you that sigma is equal to P upon A now P is load so the units of load are newtons and the SI units of area is meter square this means you would have one newton per meter square which is but obviously one pascal now in engineering calculations we do not use SI units because meter is a very big quantity we normally use metric system of units in metric system of units the unit of length is millimeters so one meter is equal to 1000 millimeter so if I have to substitute it here so one Pascal is equal to one Newton by uh, thousand square millimeter square this means one thousand square Pascal is equal to one Newton per millimeter square now what is this this can be take written down as 10 to power 6 Pascal 10 to power 6 Pascal means 1 mega Pascal because 10 to power 6 means mega and this becomes equal to 1 Newton per millimeter square this means the commercial units of actually describing the stress value of a solid body or of a material are mega Pascals so 1 mega Pascals is equal to 1 Newtons per millimeter square another unit of describing stress value is giga Pascal or 1 GPA this is 1 kilo Newton per millimeter square and we very well know that 1 kilo Newton is nothing but 1000 Newtons okay this was fairly easy going ahead now let's look at these uh, this condition it says that in order for this equation to be valid if you want this equation to be valid then the force acting must act through the center of the body okay so just have a look at this prismatic bar this is the centroidal axis this is the centroidal axis so the load which is acting on the body is acting through the centroidal axis or it is collinear with the centroidal axis or you can say it is acting through the centroid so when this is the condition then this uh, equation is valid but what happens if it does not act through the centroid then this equation is not valid as load which acts will not be uniformly distributed and when it is not uniformly distributed some bending will occur which will induce more complicated formulas for stress that will be, that will be covered uh, when we study about the bending of uh, beams or bending stresses this means in order for this to be applicable the load should always act through the centroidal axis in this case the load is acting a little bit offset from the centroidal axis so let us say this is the eccentricity E so due to this there will be some bending which will take place like this so the prismatic bar will tend to sag like the, uh, tend to hog like this so this is the induction of bending and the non validity of this simple formula moving ahead let's come to another very important topic of strain now strain is nothing but change in length upon original length so let us denote change in length as delta L and original length as L if you have tensile load acting the change in length is always positive change because the length always increases and therefore the the strain induced would always be a positive strain when you have compressive loads the change in length would always be a negative quantity because there is some decrease in the length and the 
you know the the strain induced will again be a negative quantity now this is a length and this is also a length so length by length means the strain will have no units there are no units for strain okay because it's just ratio of two lengths moving ahead <coughs> 